Hi everyone, Reese here, and welcome back to Control Alt Reese. In this video, I'll be giving you an update on my Acorn Archimedes A305 restoration and upgrade project, just covering some of the jobs that I've been doing on this machine over the past couple of weeks to get it ready for an upcoming video. But first, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably noticed that things have changed a bit around here. Now, I've been remodelling my man cave slash YouTube studio slash office slash whatever you want to call this room. Uh, I've been putting some new shelving in, I've been getting all my computers and my Atari collection out on display. It's all looking really, really good so far. Uh, my patrons have seen some behind the scenes photos already, uh, but I will be putting together a new tour, of course. I've got some really good time lapse footage of the build process. I really can't wait to show that to you. I'm not quite ready just yet. There's just a few things I want to finish off. I want to do some more work on the lighting and, and tweaking the layout a little bit, but it's very, very nearly there and it's looking really awesome so far. So look forward to that one. Anyway, back onto the topic at hand, and I have a bit of a confession to make if I'm honest. You see, this week's video was going to be a tutorial on how to rebuild one of these. And this is the original Archimedes keyboard, of course. I got this with the computer a few years ago, and it's never worked properly. Uh, half the keys don't even work, uh, they get stuck down, it was really filthy and crusty and disgusting inside. It's obviously had something spilt in it at some point, so the PCB inside's really badly corroded. So I thought, yep, yeah, you know, restoration video, fix this keyboard up upgrade it, make it better than new, uh, and uh, I thought that would make it a great topic for a video. So there's a company over in Texas called Texelec who make brand new foam capacitive pads for these Keytronic keyboards. Uh, it's the same system that's used in the Apple Lisa and the Compact Portable and a few other machines, so they're manufacturing those brand new. Ordered some of those, waited a few weeks for them to arrive. Uh, I also found some new key springs, so originally this would have used rubber domes and they were really badly perished and pretty disgusting. I discovered that uh, Amiga 600 key springs actually fit in the keys really well. Really improved the feel of the keyboard as well, which I thought would be fantastic for uh, from an upgrade point of view. I found those uh, from a company called Retrohacks and ordered some of those as well. Sat down, set up the camera, uh, spent two hours completely stripping down, cleaning and rebuilding this keyboard. Also retrobited the case and the keys as well. Really, really nice end result, really great looking thing. So after putting a lot of time and effort into rebuilding this thing, I got it all back together, got it plugged into the Archimedes, and half the keys still didn't work. Now obviously there's some very serious damage to the PCB, or maybe the controller chips failed, uh, but it was very very disheartening to see, and to be honest I've spent far too much time on this, so I did what any normal person would do. I went onto eBay, uh, had a look for a new one, and happened to discover that there was someone about 20 minutes drive from me selling really really nice refurbished Archimedes keyboards. So I went and picked it up earlier today, and that's what I'm using with the computer now. Now I think it's actually a slightly later model, uh, probably from an Archimedes A5000, um, and I know that the keyboard that I had before with the red keys and the BBC branding is quite an old one and, and quite sought after, so obviously I'm not just going to chuck that one away, I'm going to have to see what I can do with it. Uh, but I'm really, really happy with this new one. It's a really, really good match for the machine cosmetically. I think I actually prefer it to the old one that I was using before, but most importantly it works absolutely perfectly. Uh, and it means I can get on and do what I originally intended to do with this computer. And that brings me quite neatly onto the monitor. Now, if you watched my update video a couple of weeks ago, you'll no doubt be familiar with this. This is the Acorn AKF11, which is the correct monitor for this system. Uh, it was also sold under the Commodore brand as the 1081, I think. Uh, it was also sold as a Philips CM8833. Now, this monitor was listed as spares or repair on eBay, and it was described as having a couple of faults. The main one being that it turned off after a couple of minutes, which I have to admit, in my own testing, I couldn't reproduce. Uh, the monitor just seemed to work perfectly fine. The other issue was that it had a glare guard fitted to the tube, and it was a kind of a fabric material, and it was torn, so obviously it had to come off. Uh, the main issue with that being that the only way to remove it was to de-energise the monitor and completely strip it down and take the tube out, which was quite a major job, uh, but it's something I've done on a couple of CRTs over the years, and not really something that intimidates me anymore, so... Uh, just yet another job for the list. So I was really happy that I got a real bargain with this monitor, especially considering the power fault didn't crop up at all. Until last night, when I was fighting with the keyboard, and then all of a sudden the monitor didn't want to stay turned on. If you're familiar with this model of monitor, or maybe the Philips or Commodore variants of it, you'll probably know that there's a common fault with the power switch. Essentially the switch wears over time and gets to a point where it doesn't want to latch anymore. Now, the monitor will stay on if you hold the button down, but of course that's not very convenient when it comes to a monitor, so I had to strip it down again and bypass the switch. 
Uh, it's just temporary until I can find another switch. Uh, I did have a look online and they seem to be out of stock everywhere at the minute, but I'm hoping I can get hold of one. It does mean I can get on and use the monitor, and obviously I'll just have to turn it on and off at the mains for now. So being an RGB monitor, it has separate signals for the red, green and blue colour channels, of course. And uh, these older monitors expect the sync signal to come through on the green channel. It's called sync on green, and it was quite common back in the day. Uh, but I'd actually been using this computer with a newer Acorn VGA monitor, and these newer monitors expect separate horizontal and vertical sync signals, which the computer can be modified to output, and it was an official modification that was supported by Acorn back in the day. So I did that a few years ago. Now this modification involves cutting one of the legs on one of the chips on the motherboard. And the chip is at position IC4 on this particular motherboard, and it's an SN74 LSO5 multiplexer chip. Well, what this chip usually does is it takes the composite sync signal, and it combines it with the green channel going out through the monitor port to generate that sync on green signal for the monitor. Of course, if you cut the leg on this chip, it means that the computer no longer works with the older style sync on green monitors. So I had to desolder the chip with the cut leg. I decided to fit a socket so I could fit a brand new chip. The other part of that original modification was to fit some jumpers, which allow you to switch between composite and separate H and V sync. So of course, it's also important to remember to switch those back. Then it's just a case of going into the screen section of the configuration utility and changing the setting to work with a standard definition 15kHz monitor. Thankfully, if you do manage to completely screw up the display settings or they're just not compatible with your monitor, the Archimedes does supply a really, really useful black and white composite video output which always works and allows you to go in and change the settings back. And so the final modification I wanted to do is a bit of an upgrade actually, and it made sense to do it while the motherboard was out and I was doing the job on the video chip. This one was actually suggested to me on an Acorn user's Discord, and uh, there was a user on there who was very, very insistent that this upgrade was well worth doing. And it involves replacing the op amp in the audio amplifier section of the motherboard with an uprated version. So the original chip as fitted by Acorn was an LM324N, which was a very inexpensive part. And it turns out that there was actually an uprated version that was made by a company called Burr Brown. Burr Brown don't seem to be around anymore, but when they were, they made high-end op-amps and digital-to-analog converters for hi-fi systems, so it stands to reason that dropping one into an Archimedes would improve the audio output, and it just so happens that they did make a chip that was pin-compatible with the LM324N. So I very carefully desoldered the original op-amp and fitted a socket in its place, and I'm very much looking forward to switching between the two and seeing if I can hear any difference. I did have a bit of a play last night and captured some footage from cannon fodder, but to be honest I couldn't really hear much of a difference. But I haven't spent much time with it yet, so it's something I'm very much looking forward to exploring in the future. And for the sake of a couple of quid, it's got to be worth a try. So there we have it. I think I've finally managed to put together a really nice clean example of an early Archimedes, if I do say so myself, and I think it's going to serve me very well in that upcoming video I said about covering the history of the Archimedes and the ARM architecture. I'd love to know your thoughts though, maybe you owned one of these back in the day and have a suggestion for a game or a piece of software I can try out? Let me know down in the comments section. Of course also let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for the channel, for future videos, anything regarding the Archimedes or anything at all really. Uh, always happy to have a chat. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I'll hopefully see you around.